So we're in the book of James, if you want to turn there. Uh, we're going to be uh, continuing our series on, on wisdom uh, for everyday stuff of life. And um, uh, this title of the sermon today is Wisdom for Fighting Temptations. How many would love to have victory over every trial and every temptation that comes your way? Man, I just want victory in, in Jesus' name. You know, trials, trials and tribulations. Trials are like a two-sided two, two -sided coin. On one side of the coin, you, it just drives us to Jesus. We're going through an issue in our lives. We can't, we don't understand it. We, we feel like the enemy's attacking us. And all of a sudden, we just run to Jesus. Jesus, help me. I need help in this situation right now. And all of a sudden, boom, he gives us an answer. It's like crazy, right? Or you've probably seen people do this. People that get into trials, they get into trying to handle it all themselves, right? They get, they get, they run away from God. They try to go back to something that comforted them in the past and, and try to deal with that trial. And I tell you, uh, God wants you to draw Him. You know, trials are like a lure. They lure us away from God, or they can lure us to God. And we need to um, realize that. Let's look at verse twelve in your Bible. I mean, Jesus wants to help us. Amen. Can you say amen? Jesus wants to help us in every situation. We just have to let him. Come on, put a smile on your face. I know that was true, right? Yes. He loves you and he cares about you. He wants you to overcome your situations. He wants to have victory, or he wants you to have victory in your life. Verse 12, James chapter 1. Like we're going to go through the book of James, and I don't know when we're going to get done with it now. I think we've got two more sermons left out of this chapter 1, so it's going to be right. But verse 12 says this, Blessed is the man who perseveres under trials, because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God had promised him to those who love him. Amen? Amen. God loves us. John chapter 3 tells us God gave his son because he loved us. He loved us and he wants you to have victory in your life. Amen. There's nothing that will separate us from God except for sin, right? And Jesus gave us victory over sin so now we can have a relationship with the Father. God provided salvation for me and you from the beginning. Yes. He knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. You guys know all this stuff already. I'm just going to encourage you. Salvation is found in it. God is on your side. And when you go through trials, and when you go through tribulations, he's saying, come to me. Come and visit me. Come and spend some time with me. Come and humble yourself before me. Come and I will give you exactly what you need to overcome everything. God loves you. Look at that. He says, and when you stand the test of time, you have a crown of life. Yeah. 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 Think about that. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to stand before Jesus and you're going to say, Well done, my good and faithful yeah. servants. Hallelujah. You fought the good fight. You ran the race. You made it. Hallelujah. You trusted me in every trial, in every situation. You trusted me. And guess what? Here's the crown. Hallelujah. Here is for you. Yes. Right? Yes. It's for you. You fought the good fight. You did it. And you know what's going to happen in Revelation 7? We're going to take the crowns that we get at that moment. Because we're not worthy to receive them. That's right. And we're going to place them at the feet of yes. Jesus. Yes, hallelujah. Because he is the one who provides us all right. for us. Amen? Right. Yes. Amazing. He loves us that much. Yes. And he wants to see you succeed. So in every time we go through a trial, every time we go through something, we need to learn to just love him. What you love most, then you will bind. I just want to go right to the end right now. Because I, I already read the sermon, so I know. <laughs> I want you to love Jesus. Everything, everything we go through life is to bring us closer to him. What you love most, most controls you. Most controls what you do. If you love God, you got it. You got it. You made it. God, no matter what happens in my life, no matter what I'm I love you, God. I'm not going to question who you are. I'm going to trust you, God, because you have the words to eternal life. I trust you, God. So here's a question for you. What do you love most? 
What you love most always comes out when you're suffering or when you're going through trials and tribulations. Amen. If you love God, you're going to run to Him. Man, I'm fighting with my wife. I don't know how to, you know, I, we're having some problems here. What do you do? You Together we grab hands and say, Jesus, help us. And all of a sudden, He's right there to help us. Amen? This love should control God's love. God first loved us, so we should... Let me think about this. God loved us first. He loved us first. And we should love Him. We should choose to love Him. Amen? Amen. Here's some more questions. How do you know what you love most? And this is kind of fun to think about. Think about this. What, how do you know what you love most? Do you daydream about my life all day long? What do you daydream about? What consumes your thought as you're going to bed and you're sleeping? Huh? So what, whatever consumes you during that moment while you're ready to go to sleep, your mind just goes, I don't know about you, but sometimes I can't sleep, right? And I'm thinking about stuff. I'm thinking about all this stuff. And you know what I, I do now? And I've done this now for a while. I force myself to think about the Word of God. Yes. I force myself to think about Scripture that will encourage me that, God, you are in control. You have this. I don't have to worry about it. Amen? And I force myself to say, yes, God, you can do all things. As a matter of fact, I cast all my cares upon you, God, because you care for me. What consumes your thoughts when you're going to sleep? What do you think about most when you're watching, when you're watching the news these days? I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on, right? Yes. Does God got this, or we're going to be in confusion? I believe confusion is from the enemy, so I don't, I don't worry. I can listen to all the news casts and all the programs and all this. I can do that. It doesn't, I have no fear over it. Because God's got this. Amen? What captivates your attention most during the day? What do you, where do you first go to on Facebook? I hate Facebook. And I, and I love it at the same time. You know? It's like a love-hate relationship. Right? I got ministry friends. I got people across the country and across the world that I just love. I love to hear updates. We just uh, uh, gave all this food and the last of our money to these refugees so they could have some food and clothing for their babies. They had spent all our money, right? I just love hearing the updates, right? I just, oh, I just know that God's using them and pray for them. And then you got all the other junk that's on. <laughs> <laughs> like delete, delete, you know, whatever. I just, just don't want, and I just don't go there for a while, amen. Yeah. Because it's just it can consume you, right? That's right. What consumes you most will control you. Look at verse thirteen. It says, "When temptation, when temptation, no one should say, when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does it does he tempt anyone, but each of." Each one is tempted when, by his own evil desire, he is dragged away. So look, at, let's stop there for a moment. When you are tempted, the source of your temptation is not God. Right. Let me say that again. When you're tempted, the source of your temptation is not God. The problem is really inside you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if something is in you, God bless you. Ashley's not feeling well, so just, you know, pray for her. The reason you give into temptation is because inside you there's a desire that is enticed by the temptation. It's yes. inside you. Yes. You're tempted. You're thinking about things you're not supposed to be thinking about. All of a sudden the tempter comes and tempts you in that area. That's how the enemy works. What do you lust after? That's what the word desire, I will touch about that. For. What do you want? What's inside you? What is happening inside you? <laughs> You need to pay attention to because that will lead you or could lead you to a stray, right? We're not saying that this has power over you. You have power over the desires that's in you. That's right. Don't let them rule you because those desires, most of the time, are not from God. Amen? Okay. Well, the ones that lead you away from Him are not from God. Can I just be pastor for a moment? <laughs> Can I just talk to where, it's, where we're real? Yeah. We rather have the things that is taking us away from God than the things that bring us to God. Right, yeah. We have to fight the good fight of faith to be able to continue to follow after Him. Can you say amen or oh me or oh my? Amen. But that's the truth. Amen. You have to work at this relationship because the enemy of your soul does not want you to succeed. Right. 
And then you have your own flesh desires that you have to have control and contend with. This is what C.S. Lewis said in his book called The Weight of Glory. I hope I can read this right. He said, it, is, it would seem that our Lord finds our desires not too strong, but weak. We are half-hearted creatures, fooling about with drink and sex and ambitions, which invite joy to uh, when invited joy to offer us, like an ignorant child, we want to go play in <laughs> we want to go making mud pies in the slums. Just around the corner, because he cannot imagine, because you can't imagine it, because we act like children. What it means by what it is meant by the offer of a holiday at the sea. So we'd rather play in the mud than get out a nice, have a nice holiday at the sea. Is what he's saying. We'd rather do that because we we think we're comforted in that we don't see just on the other side. God has something so much better for us. Amen. Amen. We Amen. fall around in our, our mistakes and our our, our our sin, and we don't realize right on the other side of it, God has something so much grander for you and me. Amen? Freedom from all that. As a matter of fact, the pleasures in God is so much greater than the pleasures of the world. Yes. Amen? Yes. It's so much peaceful, so much joyful. Well, I really like doing this thing. Well, if that thing is taking you away from God, then that thing is not of God. Did you really say that, Pastor? Yes, I did. We need big, we need to create a big desire for God. Yes. We have a little desire. We, we're just satisfied with, I'm saved. Yes. Well, there's much more than just being on the other side. I used to call it fire insurance. I'm not going to go to hell because I said yes to Jesus. But there's so much more that God has for you because he loves you. But we have a small view of who God is. God has so much more for us. He loves you. Yeah. He loves you and he wants you to have so much more. Amen? We need to examine our own desires. Here's some questions again. Are the desires in your heart godly? Yes or no? You can answer that question. You can write it in the back of your bulletin so you can see it. Are your, are your view of God huge and big? Are they the type of desires that God wants you to have? And you don't need any passion to tell you that. I should not, you already know, the Holy Spirit is telling you what those desires are in you yes. that are good or bad. He will tell you. He's not going to keep a secret from you because he wants you to have victory. Amen. He wants you to be glorious. He wants you to know him. Can I have some more? <clears throat> Can your desire be met by God? Think about that. Are you hiding the desires away from God? What lured you away when you first, before you believed, should not lure you away from God now. That's right. And Andy and I, last year, we did a little bass fishing. And I fell in love with fishing a long time ago, but bass fishing is really, and I'm learning more scientific than it's just throwing a bait out in the water. And every once in a while when you throw a bait out in the water, you're going to catch something, but I'm telling you, you have to really know what kind of bait. So we learned last year that in the spring, we use, I have a, a favorite worm that I use, it's called watermelon magic. I hook it up, I can throw, I, I hook it up wacky style, I learned that. We'll talk about some other time, we'll learn about it. You cast it out there, that worm just goes down to the bottom, boom, you get a bite. I mean, I almost got a bite quite a bit. Every, every, every time we went out, we, had a, we caught a fish. But as the season changed, as the season changed, then all of a sudden that watermelon magic worm didn't work. I used a different, I tried to find, you have to find a search for that, that lure that works, right? That's how we should be in our maturity with Christ. Nothing should lure us back to our old, our old life. We shouldn't go back, and we find, if we find ourselves as a believer going back to what we did before we were believers, you need to know that the enemy has enticed you in your desires to go, go away from God, and you need not to do that. I was telling, we watched a video with a group of pastors uh, a few 
uh, months ago, we hosted uh, our section here, and we showed him a video. I'd like to show it to you today, but I won't. You can look it up online. It was a pastor, uh, it was a more of a, I don't know, Catholic or Lutheran or Presbyterian type of setting, you know, they had it, a real religious setting. Pastor comes up and he's about to read his sermon, and he says, stop it! because you're making me look bad before God. Anyway, it's pretty funny and humorous, but everybody laugh. But as a pastor, you say, stop it. Stop being lured away by the things of the world. Before you were an enemy of God, but now you're not an enemy of God. You're a child of God. Right. Now that you're a believer. That's why I love missional community so much. Because in our missional community, we share everything with each other. I know everybody is, it takes time for people to, to just open up, but it, in our group, it just seems like everybody just like shares stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm dealing with this, and they're talking about sex, or dealing with this, I'm talking about drinking, or doing it. I mean, just amazing stuff that, it, it, it's just, it's amazing, I just love it, you know? Tina and I, afterwards, just sit there going, wow, God, we did a really great thing again, you know? We didn't do anything, we just started talking, and it just happened, because God wants to get rid of all sin out of your life. Right? He doesn't want you to walk in that. He, you, we should walk in victory. We should be, when you talk about hilariously, uh, what did you say, uh, worshiping God? I mean, man, you can't do that when you're sitting there. You can't jump up and down and be excited because I, there's unbelief in there. There's yeah. sin there. There's stuff that's holding you away from God. I think, you know, I don't know about you, but I, I get a little happy. We're going to be doing dancing in church. I mean, in heaven, I think. I think there's going to be like jumping up and down and stuff. In my mind, I can see like people, like you're in front of Jesus. Can you imagine? We're made it! Hallelujah! It's going to be awesome! And I'm going to be the loudest guy there. Jesus, I got to see him face to face. Yes, he forgave me so much. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The next part of scripture, let's go to verse 15. Oh, are you getting excited yet? It says, then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it's full grown or made complete, gives birth to what? Death. Death. So, okay, this, I, I, I love this, this, I have it all marked up in my Bible, it says LSD, lust, sin, death, yeah. <laughs> or, or your desire turns into lust. It, that lust gives birth or to or can be, it conceives sin. So as long as you keep that desire that's not godly in you, it's going to produce sin eventually. Yeah. This is the only time I approve of abortion. Abort that lust. Abort that desire. Get rid of it so you don't end up dead in Christ Jesus. Amen. You have to get rid of it. Because it will lead to death. Yes. It's in you. Whatever desire that you have, if it's not God, like I said, you can have desires for God. And go after God. Read your Bible. Pray. Get with people that will encourage you in their faith. Get after it and go for it. But if you let those sinful desires go inside you and it will produce in you, look what it says. It says it will, it, your desires, your lust, the word desire here, if you want to study Greek or a little bit, it's, it just produces, it means lust. So lust inside you for something that's not of God, it could be anything that's not from God, is in you. It could be, you know, it could be uh, uh, sex, it could be money, it could be whatever is that you put before God. It could be fishing. Whatever. You desire something so much that it conceives in you, or look what it says, and it gives birth to sin. And this is a pattern that happens to everyone. It's not James, Pastor James wrote this in here because he wanted you to realize this is so critical in the Christian, he's talking to Christians here. He's talking to believers. He's talking to early church. Be careful what you do, or hatred, or unforgiveness, whatever is in there will lead to sin, and that sin is going to lead to death if you don't take, do something about it. Today, I want you to do something about it. I want the church to be a bride. Yes. 
that's going to be presented to Jesus. The Word of God says a bride without spot or wrinkle, no blemish in us. And then the bridegroom, Jesus, will accept the bride. That's what I want. Amen. You know what keeps me up at night? What keeps me up at night is that people that call themselves Christian continue to live in sin. There's God. The world is not coming to Jesus because of us. Because they don't see a difference. They're doing and living and being the same thing that they are. There's got to be something different. And it starts with recognizing that within us there's, there's some desires that are not of God. We're believing a lot. <coughs> what do you love most? Most controls you. Repent, saints. Repent. I used to think repenting was this whole act of behavioral change. Okay, if I don't do this, I'm repenting, so I'll stop. If I'm drinking, I shouldn't be drinking, so I shouldn't do that, so I'm going to stop drinking, now I'm different because I'm, I put this behavior behind me. And it's not that at all. No. It's in my mind. I will serve God with all my mind, my strength, my heart, everything within me. I don't want to do the things of the world because now I want to do the things of God because it's in my heart now. I want to serve Him because He freely served me. Amen. Let's look at James 16 through 17. It says, I don't, in your Bible, in my Bible, it's a capital letters. Do, don't be deceived. My dear brothers and sisters, every good and perfect gift comes from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change. Say that with me. He does not change. Like shifting shadows, like the world, like the world. There's the, every moral fiber in the world is all crazy. Well, we, they were going to say that this is okay and that's okay, blah, 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 blah. God doesn't change. His rules, his life is straight and narrow. Amen? Amen. Look at Genesis, when Genesis chapter 3, when Adam and Eve were deceived. What did they attack? What did the enemy attack? The Word of God. Right? The enemy attacked the Word of God. Did he really say that? He didn't mean that. Oh, okay, we'll take this tree. Right? And what happened? Boom. They desired something they should have, and then sin entered, and they were separated from God. It brought death to the world. Yes. That's how it entered in Genesis. Go back and read it. Here's four liberating truths about God. God is great. God is glorious. God is God. And God is gracious. God is great, so I don't have to be in control. I, if you get overly controlling in your life, i got to be in control of everything. I know people like that. got to have a list. got to do everything. <laughs> They're all stressed out. God doesn't want you to be stressed out. He does not want you to be stressed out. I told a story yesterday to a gentleman that I want to share with you. <coughs> we were made to be sheep. Sheep do not carry burdens. You can't put a load of a pack on a, on a sheep. They'll just fall. They gotta be led. They gotta be clean. They gotta be taken care of. Sheep are just that way. We need God. God never wants us to carry the burden of our guilt. No. I used to tell people in the church, "This is a guilt-free zone. You don't have to bring your guilt in here. You can leave your guilt at the door." God wants to set you free from that. God is glorious, so we don't have to fear. Fear is not from God. Fear is from the enemy. When you get yourself in a situation and fear comes over you, you say, no, I accept this. No, I do not accept this. My God is glorious, but I don't have to accept fear. Sorry. Amen? Because you don't have to walk in that. Well, Pastor, you don't know how everything's falling around or apart. Around. I know everything's falling apart. I'm going to pray with you, but we're going to believe that God can help you overcome this situation. Because God doesn't want us to be fearful. It's kind of cool. I'll get into that. Anyway, God is God. God is God, and that settles it. Yeah. There's not many gods. There's one God. 
He's my father, and he loves me. He cares so much about me that when sin entered the world, that he sent his son to provide a plan that every sin that I ever committed or ever will commit will be forgiven because of the blood that he shed for us. It's amazing. It's amazing the salvation that God's given us. God is gracious and forgive every time. He'll forgive every time. We just have to come to him humbly before him and say, God, please forgive me. And he will forgive us. Amen. What lie are you believing this morning about him? He's not that great of a God. He can't help me with the situation. He can't forgive me because I did so much bad stuff. God can't forgive me. That's a lie from hell. He can forgive everything because he loves us. God is great. He's a good, good God. Our Father loves you. And cares about you. He wants to remove from you the things that are in there and not of him, but he's not going to rip them out from you. You have to give them over to him. You have to say, here God. Here it is, Lord. This is me before you. Broken. Messed up. I'm just being real. Come, my son. He never, God has never, ever pushed me away. He's never pushed me away. Anytime I come to him, he said, yes, I can take that. He goes to work in my heart, and he removes that thing from me that's not up him, <coughs> so I can look more like his son each and every day. But we got to come to him. He's willing to do that for you and for me. Look at the last verse. Verse 18, I'm sorry. He chooses to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of all his creation. Let me read that again. Just close your eyes for a moment. Let me listen to as I read these words and receive these words from God. He chooses to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. First fruits. He's talking at the beginning of the church. We're part of the fruit that was left over, that, that's been growing since then. And we're supposed to produce fruit after our own kind. God wants to transform your desires. He wants to give you new life. He's transforming. He's changing you into his image. Desire for godly life grows, and we need to grow up in him. There's so many times I talk about maturing as Christians, growing up in him. Learning is God's desire. We need to, we need to do that. Just like a mom, a baby desires a mother, because a mom provides all that baby needs, <clears throat> cries after mom, needs mom. We need to cry after God. We need God to help us in every situation. We need Him. We need Jesus. We need Him. We need Jesus. I mean, in the desert, Jesus was tempted in every way and overcame the temptation by the word. But this is, that was amazing, right? You read that story about how Jesus was tempted and the enemy took him in these different places and he overcame by the word of God. That was, to me, I just love the battle between Satan and Jesus. He shows us that he, we overcome those temptations by the word of God. So you need to know the word of God. You need to be in the Word of God. But I think the greatest moment in, in the Word of God for me is when Jesus was in the garden at Gethsemane. Before he was going to be crucified, before he finished everything on the cross. In his, in his humanity, 
He cried out to God. They said, God, not my will, but your will be done. If there's a better way, show it to me. But he already knew in his heart that there wasn't a better way. He had to be the one that would suffer all those things for us. find myself in that same place, God, not my will, Lord, but your will. Not my desire, but your desire. Lord, take all the sin, take the sickness. You overcame death. God, take it all away from me so I can be like Jesus. <coughs> Amen? I want to close with two thoughts or two questions. Would you just I'm going to say them, then I want you to just bow, bow your heads right where you're at and just close your eyes for a moment. This is very important. What do I wrongly desire? And what do I wrongly believe? Answer those questions in your heart right now. What do I wrongly desire? Or what do I wrongly believe? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, just clean our hearts right now. Father, any desire that's within us, God, would you just remove, Father? Do your operate on my life, operate on my heart, operate on my desires, God. And remove anything that's in me that's not of you, God. Those unhealthy, unwor those worldly desires, God, that I have that is not pure, not holy, God, would you remove them from me, Lord? And Father, help my, my unbelief, Lord. Help me to believe, God, that you are great and glorious and gracious to me. That you are God over everything. And Lord, I believe that this morning. We believe that this morning. <coughs> Sometimes no matter uh, how many times you read the word, there's still fresh things that you hear when you go back and read the scripture again. As we've been reading, doing this sermon series on James, it's been really nice read through James a few times. This morning again in uh, chapter 1, we're reading these five verses and talking a lot about the temptation and examining our desires. We know that James was speaking to us, you know, that our desires, when they're not of God, that they lead to death. And I love how James is such a, it's a, it's a masterful speaker a masterful writer here, he then contrasts the two results. So we, when we have desires that are not of God, it says, right, that it will conceive, it will give birth to death. Then right after that, he says this, 16, do not be deceived. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heaven, who does not change like shifting shadows. So these desires that are of our flesh or of our own heart of, of sin, they'll always lead to death. <coughs> I don't know about you, but just like the Luke, just like Adam and Eve, sometimes I'm deceived to think that a sinful thing is actually a good thing. It's like what the enemy wanted them to believe. If you eat this fruit, you'll be like God. It'll be good for you. It'll be better for you to eat this fruit to be obedient to God. And James again says, and, and I felt to say again to us, don't be deceived. If we go after God things, we're going to get good things. It's going to have good results. Don't be deceived. What comes from God is always good. It's always good. It's who He is. He's good. He's right. And he's perfect. Let's pray this morning. Praise the Lord. Father, I thank you for opening our eyes to Scripture this morning. 
to speaking to us through your Holy Spirit and showing us wrong desires and wrong beliefs in our hearts. Father, I do pray over our body today that we would not be deceived, that we would not be deceived and that we would choose the desire more after you. Because, Father, we know that you are good, that you are right, and that you are perfect. And if we desire after you, Father, those are the only things that we would receive. Good, right, and perfect things. Father, I pray that we would choose those <coughs> desires. In Jesus' name, let it be so. Let it be so of us that we would not be deceived. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.